Tonight on Medically Speaking, we visit with Jessica and Friends Community, who show us, in the words of Henry David Thoreau, the language of friendship is not just words, but meanings. So please join us tonight. Welcome to Medically Speaking. I'm Dr. Katherine Benny, your host for the show. This show is sponsored to you for your good health by your county medical society as well as your county medical foundation. Tonight we're going to be discussing how those with intellectual disabilities prior to this century were thought of as being inferior and defective and were largely sequestered away in institutions, ostracized from society, out of sight. But fortunately, this viewpoint has changed and that was due largely to the efforts of people like Eunice Kennedy Schreiber. She founded not only Special Olympics, but also championed the right for civil rights, community housing, as well as health care for our disabled. Well, this has set the stage for the birth of our local community nonprofit resource, Jessica Community and Friends. And here to tell us about it is the president and CEO of the organization, Mr. Brad Kokenauer. Thank you, Welcome Dr. back to our show. Thank you, Dr. Benny. It's good to be here again. Just to recap, Tell us a little bit about the purpose and the vision and the mission of Jessica and Friends Community. Again, we, um, we're an organization, faith-based, nonprofit organization that supports adult individuals with intellectual disabilities. The best way to see what we do is through one of two ways. I believe on our last show we invited our viewers, if they were so inclined, to make an appointment and visit with us in any of our programs. You can do that by dialing us at 717-747-9000. We'd be glad to accommodate anyone with an appointment um, to, to visit our programs and see what Jessica and Friends actually does. There's a great opportunity through our website at jnfcommunity.org to view the founders video, Peter and Paulette Tegg, who are the founders of Jessica and Friends Community, it's about a five minute clip, Dr. Benny, but it really encapsulates what they were feeling, what they were seeing, and what they wanted to create to support other families in your county that had children with intellectual disabilities. Well, I can attest to the fact that I've done both. I've visited your website, I've seen your Facebook page as well, and I ultimately visited your facility, the activities facility, as well as one of the residential facilities. And I must say that the visitation had just tremendous impact. It's a very heartwarming experience. And if you want to best experience Jessica and friends, the best thing to do is to go and visit. Yeah, it's, it's very true and it, it, it goes beyond, they say, the old saying is seeing is believing. And the visitation takes you beyond seeing. What you sense, what you hear, what you feel in emotion and sensitivity of the individuals and the staff of Jessica and Friends is changing of your own mindset into what disabilities, as you have already said, become abilities. Yes, we entered the activities room and everybody was very busy doing their different things. One person might be on the computer, another one was applying makeup to a mannequin head, which also helps to develop their fine motor skills. But one of the women looked up and saw us there. She immediately ran over and introduced herself. 
made us feel very welcome and then started introducing the others in the room. This is so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. Glad you could come today. Mm. It was truly a wonderful experience. We didn't feel like intruders in the least. No. They would not treat anyone that comes to that facility as an intruder. They welcome guests. Um, they are very capable and extend genuine, authentic hospitality. They and are truly happy to see someone, a new face, come in and meet their friends. I was surprised as you walked through, they actually began to tease you about different things. Uh, obviously having a very close, non-intimidating relationship with you and the other staff that were around. Mm -hmm. It's almost as though your staff has a calling. That's a, great, that's a great comment. And again, we believe that that is one of the things that separates us as being a faith-based organization. Many of our staff will testify to the fact that the reason they do what they do is because they believe it's an opportunity for them to serve a calling in which they were made to service people with intellectual disabilities with compassion and love and care. Let's talk a little bit about your staffing because they are actually hands-on with the clients, helping them. How many staff do you employ? Uh, Jessica and Friends currently has 97 employees and we uh, are very, very proud of the fact of our staff and the, and the pride that each one of them takes in their job every day. It clearly is the game changer as it relates to personal care and support of individuals. It doesn't matter how great your strategy is, doesn't matter how great your, your program or your planning, your curriculum is, those are all essentials. But it really comes down to every day that personalized care, that real emotion, um, seeing and being on the site at the time of need that really, really makes the difference. It's a tough job. Uh, we have part-time staff, we have full-time staff, but I will tell you, every one of our staff at the end of the day is tired, they're exhausted physically and emotionally from what they deal with through the course of the day. And I will tell you that if you would look at our uh, current website, we have a video on there called Help Solve the, DS the uh, DSP Crisis. DSP, what is that? Direct Support Professional. That is the name which is given to staff members who specifically support individuals with disabilities and agencies such as Jessica and Friends. Well, what is the crisis? The crisis is that the wages of direct support professionals is driven by state and federal funding. There has not been an increase as it relates to reimbursement for their services in nearly 10 years. We are currently, as uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is voting on a budget as we speak, talking about a budget as we speak, part of that has been directed to increasing the wages of direct support workers in the, in the human services field. That is very important because you can't just put these individuals in a lecture hall and have one professor or teacher standing up in front of them. They need the one-on-one. -on -one. It's, very, it's a very individualized, it's a very individualized service. And so you're absolutely right. And the connectivity, as you had mentioned, when you saw in your tour of our facility, the connection between the staff and the individuals they serve, it's important that you don't have turnover. It's important that they become comfortable and confident in understanding who's going to be there to support them every day. And these are individuals who have difficulty with adapting to change. No. They don't create and solve problems as we do. You're, abs you're absolutely right, Dr. Benny. It's uh, anything that changes the day for them um, can be something as simple as uh, the, the transportation system that brings them is running late or perhaps a different driver. The smallest thing can upset their day and change how the, how the day looks to them, which again is very important as our staff greets them when they come into our facilities. It's amazing that your facility started in, was it 1998? And it's grown to be five residential homes, uh, subsidiary programs in Hanover. Mm -hmm. What next? Well, we've been very fortunate. We've, we believe that, that, God has, um, that God has given us the opportunity to expand. 
and um, I won't go into all of those details um, because of the time that we're restricted to on the show, but we do believe that prayerfully and carefully is how we want to grow the organization and how we have grown the organization. Two resident homes were opened within a year. Um, both of our Hanover and York uh, day programs have been e expanded, and now we are currently in the process of expanding our Hanover Day program again to accommodate up to 51 individuals to service more families in the Hanover community. But honestly, Dr. Benny, it's, it's about quality. We do not want to sacrifice the quality of service, the quality of care for the sake of opening more facilities and servicing more people. We want to make sure that the individual support programs that are designed by supports coordinators from the county, work with by our program specialists, our program managers, that those things are executed, that the quality and development of every single individual that's being serviced by Jessica and friends is first and foremost in our minds. What advantage is there to having a faith-based program in a facility such as yours or a program such as yours? Well, we believe that, we, again, we believe that faith is, is spirituality is part of our being. Uh, we believe that, that all of us are created in the image of God, spiritual being in himself. And that socially, physically, mentally, spiritually, that there's a connectivity. There's a connectivity between all of us with one another and there's a connectivity between all of us and God. And so we feel that that is what really well rounds the individual. And we uh, try to support them through whatever, uh, whatever means that may be, transportation to worship services. Um, our Hosanna Ringers, I think we mentioned in our, our first show, is a, is a faith ministry that we have where 12, about 12 of our individuals actually are handbell choir and they perform. And in many cases, those performances are in local churches. Um, which give those churches the opportunity to think about disabilities ministry within their own churches and create a disabilities ministry within their own church, as well as create an awareness of Jessica and friends and the support and services we give to people that may be part of their church that may be looking for those services. So it's a great, it's a great relationship we have to build the community. Do you have a specific local churches that back your programs? We do. Um, uh, First Presbyterian Church in York has been a longtime supporter of Jessica and Friends Community. Uh, Church of the Open Door in Shiloh, now with uh, an East Campus out on East Market Street. Um, Living Word has been a strong supporter of Jessica and Friends uh, for the last number of years as well. Just to name a few, there are many, um, even through the Hosanna Ringer concerts, that will come back to us and donate specifically to our ministry. So, um, uh, there, there, are, there are so many churches and so many affiliations um, that are supporting us and we greatly appreciate and see that as a partnership in our faith-based uh, perspective. And we might add that the, the clients, the individuals that are benefiting from the programs also want to give back to the community. And I was very touched by the story of the flowers that were donated to Jessica and Friends Community. Mm -hmm. What happens to these okay. flowers? Yeah, that's, the, um, that's, that's called our, our Blossoms to Blessings. And uh, basically we have a local florist, uh, uh, Olps uh, Florist, uh, that actually uh, donates flowers to, to our organization and our individuals um, with the assistance of some volunteers put together special arrangements that then are delivered to nursing homes and, and people with, uh, with needs. And so your clients learn the joy of giving. They, they do learn the joy of giving, yes, and, and participate. And what about the cookies that they bake? The, um, the, the cookies are something that um, is, is relatively new uh, to Jessica and friends. It's something that we uh, really ramped up, I think, last year at our Indian Rock Acres facility. Our innkeepers down there, Glenn and Millie Martin, um, work with our, our, um, our community staff, Dave Toomey, and uh, Mary Hildebrand and bringing, and bringing our individuals in there and, and baking cookies and, and doing some of those things as well. I have a favorite quote by Marcel Proust who said, 
Let us be grateful to the people that make us happy. They are the charming gardeners who make our souls mm. blossom. Mm. And so is true of Jessica and mm. friends yes. and community. So we'll be back shortly after taking this break. Please continue to watch. <laughs> Welcome back to Medically Speaking. I'm Dr. Katherine Benny. We are visiting with Jessica and Friends Community, which is a faith-based nonprofit organization dealing with intellectually disabled adults. Uh, we are going to be joined in this segment by Sandy Myers, who is the program director. In our first segment, she told us about two of the programs, the residential program, as well as the par parent caregiver support program. So welcome back to our show. Thank you, Dr. Benny. Um, two other programs that you have. One other one is called Home and Community Program. What is that? The Home and Community Program is designed specifically for individuals who still live at home with their families or live on their own. And what the manager of that program does is he matches up staff with the individual and they go into the person's home and work with them one-on-one -on -one or take them out in the community and work one-on-one. -on -one. You say work with them. What are they working on? If the staff person is working with an individual in an activity called habilitation, they work on specific goals. And they could be goals such as cooking, cleaning their room, laundry skills, budgeting, making a grocery list. And then it could also be skills out in the community such as learning to ride the bus, learning to shop for their groceries, to pay for their groceries, learning to use the library. Uh, there's a whole multitude of goals that they can work on. Mm -hmm. I heard of an instance wherein a client was taught how to check his blood sugar. Correct. They can be taught um, to take care of their medical needs as well. All of which is designed to make them more independent. Absolutely. Correct. Right. And we find that they're actually more capable than was once thought. They are. They've done amazing things. They go out and volunteer. Um, sometimes it may lead to a job for them if they find the right match. They can find work through this service. Um, they make connections in the community. They get to know people. Um, people look forward to seeing them when they come into their stores or shops or um, various activities. We have one gentleman who he loves to knit hats on a loom and he goes to a yarn store and knows the ladies there and they sit and, and knit and make their hats and things together and um, it's just a really great relationship for them. It's amazing that they can actually knit. It is, it is. It's amazing to see but um, once they learn it, they have a knack for it and they, they keep working at it. Well, let's move on to your day programs. That's a very exciting arena. You have multiple people doing multiple different activities. How do you know where to channel them? It takes developing relationships. That's the heart, at the heart of everything that we do. Um, when Pathway Services York first opened June 10th of 2010, we started with six people there. And so we were able to work very intentionally with those six people. And over the past seven years, we've been able to grow that program to 39 individuals now. And it just really takes staff time to work with the individuals, um, develop goals for them to work on, um, find out what their interest is. Sometimes it's trial and error. You try something and it doesn't work, so you scrap that idea and then you move on to the next one. And then when you find the idea that works, you see the indi individual flourish and learn to do more and want to do more and, and develop other skills and interests and um, accomplish their dreams. And there are really a lot of opportunities. We saw uh, one of the gentlemen was on the computer Correct. doing sophisticated things. And then we look over here and you obviously have an art program. Yeah, one of the special things about Jessica and Friends Day programs is our fine arts program where we really emphasize art and music. Um, and this really started through a collaboration with the Cultural Alliance. We had an artist in residence and her job was to teach us what art really was, not just crafts, but actual art projects, and to develop that skill in staff as well as in our individuals. Um, and then we were able to find a staff person to come on part-time 
and she just does art with the individuals. So she did the faces of Jesus here. Um, this is a yarn bowl that they made. And how is that made? Um, I think it's just glue and water and yarn, and they put it over top of another bowl and, and wrap the yarn around and then paint it with the glue mixture and just let it dry and harden. That is and truly that's, amazing. That's their project. And then they do clay projects as well. This is a clay project that they molded the clay into a little jar and painted it. Um, one of our gentlemen made a sneaker. He has a sneaker with his name on Zach um, that they can keep on display. He even has a Z he, on the back of his shoe. He does. <laughs> that is really amazing. And he's got his name here on the tongue of the shoe. Yeah. It looks so real, doesn't it? And that's what makes the art program special, is it is very individualized. She could have an individual, our artist's name is Marlo, and she could have an individual come in and she wants to do clay with them, but they want to draw a picture with pencils, and she will switch to that, and they will draw a picture with pencils if that's what they choose. And we've really seen it bring people out, people that typically might not participate in activities or might not want to do a craft, they'll want to come to the art group and be part of the art group. I see many of your pictures were on the walls, and in particular, you had a display of eyeglasses, a, a summer motif. Yeah, these were their summer sunglasses, shades that they made, mm -hmm. and they each decorated them differently how they wanted to for the and summer. This one has a, a pair of parrots. It's interesting that there are parrots, not just a bird that's alone. Right. <laughs> Beautiful beach scene. Yeah. Well, you nice. told us uh, that Four of the residents in one of the houses likes to plan vacations. Correct, yes, and they love the beach. That's their favorite destination. So how is it then that you uh, fund these activities? What, what is the process for having our students get enrolled? The process for enrollment is each individual has to have what's called a supports coordinator through the county, um, the Mental Health, Intellectual Disabilities, and Developmental Disabilities System in York. Um, that they have to get connected with them through the supports coordinator. There's an intake process and then they have to get what's called a waiver and the waiver provides funds to the individual to pick the services that they want. They can pick community program, they can pick the day program that they choose, um, and they can, perfect, they can pick the provider that they want to go to. They have a lot of choice in that as well. Um, so once they have the waiver and they have their supports coordinator, they tour different programs and then they get to select which program they want to attend and the waiver provides the reimbursement to the provider. If everything is in, in line, they have their waiver, is um, there availability of spaces in your programs or is there waiting lists? At, we have a day program down in Hanover and currently there is room to add people down there. We are looking to expand that program. Our York program is currently at capacity, but um, we do have a small waiting list. That's one of the one of the current constant needs in this uh, field is waiting lists for people to get services that they need. Is there a retirement age when they can't come to your programs? There's not a retirement age. Our oldest person is probably about 76 years old now and she loves coming every day. Uh, but they do have the choice to retire. If they reach an age when they don't uh, choose to participate anymore, then they can choose to retire and, and stay at home or possibly get community program services if they'd right, like to have them at home but they can come as long as they're enjoying the program. For how many hours a day would they visit you? Um, we can provide services for up to 40 hours a week. So most people come about six hours a day, but um, some, depending on their parents' work schedule, can be there for a longer day. They can be up there to eight hours a day. So for more information, where should our viewers go? For more information, our, our viewers should go to our website www.jnfcommunity.org or they could call our main office 717-747-9000 to get more information or even to schedule a tour and come out to see our programs. Now, as a program manager, where would you like to see things going in the future? Well, our, our big emphasis right now is community participation. Um, we would love to see more people in the community partner with us, to have our individuals come on site and join them, either through volunteering or through just different experiences. If someone had an art studio where our individuals could come and do art with them. Um, if someone has a special cooking group that takes place maybe at their church, that we could come and join their cooking group. Um, any type of thing that we could um, just become more a part of our community, develop relationships with people in the community, and um, get our individuals just really connected with the people that are, could be part of their lives. 
And as far as volunteering, what kind of uh, opportunities are available? There is an endless supply of opportunities for volunteers um, working directly with the individuals, supporting them in the day program or in, their, in, the, in, in the homes even they could come into, um, doing art activities, crafts, cooking, music, um, reading, books, um, teaching them different life skills. There's always opportunities for that. For the agency as a whole, there's opportunities through landscaping in our gardens or some simple maintenance jobs. Our activities at India Rock Acres, we're always looking for volunteers to help down there. I think I saw a group of teenagers painting a fence. Correct, yes. There's always work to be done. <laughs> so that's a wonderful way to meet other kids as well. Correct. Sandy, is there one particular activity or event that stands out in your mind as being a real highlight of the year? Absolutely. The highlight of the year is our gala event. The gala event. Yes. This year, September 16th, we'll be having our fourth annual gala, and it's held at the Outdoor Country Club of York. And it is just a night to celebrate our individuals. They are invited to come out and get as dressed up as they would like to and just have a night all about them. And the evening starts with um, they arrive to the country club and the gentlemen get boutonnieres and the ladies get corsages mm. and they also get tiaras and crowns that they can wear for the night. Um, we have a couple people from the Corvette Club of York that come down and bring their Corvettes and take, the, take everyone for a ride around the parking lot and they get pictures taken with it. Um, we have a formal photo session where they can sit with their families or their friends and have pictures taken as well as candid photos throughout the evening. Um, and they're not camera shy. They are not camera shy. They are hams. They love to have their picture taken. Um, so it's a lot of fun the whole evening. But the real highlight of the whole evening, the individuals look forward to the dancing and the DJ the most. But for the rest of us, we love to see them on the red carpet. We roll out a red carpet and they get introduced individually. We talk about who they are and what they love to do and what makes them special. And they get to take a stroll in front of everyone on that red carpet. And you just see them beam and their friends cheer and, and just go wild for them as they're walking on the red carpet. It's, it's an event not to be missed. Is this a private event or is it open to the public? It's by invitation and we invite all of our individuals. We invite individuals on our waiting list. Um, we invite the individuals from the parent caregiver support group and from all of our programs their families are invited um, all the staff are invited all of our donors are invited our volunteers um, so it's it's a really good night um, it's a sponsored event we got we have a lot of um, very generous donors who help to sponsor the event and make it happen for our individuals but no contribution is too small to make a difference absolutely so. yeah so that is September 17th. 16th. 16th. Of what 20th. day of the week is that? It's a Saturday night. A Saturday night, September 16th, 2017. Correct, yes. The gala event. Yes, yes. And the day we have the gala, we'll be booking the one for the next year. That's how much they look forward to it. Isn't that wonderful? Does that include a dinner? That includes a dinner, correct. And then we have a DJ who comes, and he plays all the music that they love, and they spend the rest of the evening out on the dance floor. I would encourage all of you to look inside your hearts and make a generous donation to this wonderful, wonderful organization that is making a difference in our community. This has been Medically Speaking. Thank you so very much for coming on and sharing all the wonderful things that you do for all of us as well. Thank you for joining us viewers as well. This has been Medically Speaking. I'm Dr. Katherine Benny wishing you good health, happiness, and a great week. See you soon.